All right, what up, what up, guys? Fruit Pun Sebi here. Nova Mix. Back with more one. Oh, I forgot. Almost <laughs> played did an entire playthrough with that. All right. Is this too loud? I don't remember how I stream. It's been so long since I stream. I really forgot. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Oh yeah, I fixed my mic. Uh, so I can move the microphone. I have a new cable. That's why I haven't been streaming for a little bit this week. I have to get a new cable. This cable was getting bad. Well, it was always bad. But it got to the point where it just doesn't work anymore. So I got a new cable. Looks to be working fine, though. I'm gonna lower it down from my end. There you go. Oh, did I fall asleep? When I wake up, my room is pitch black. I turn on the lights and check the time. 7.30 p.m. I've been asleep for the past two hours. I'm hungry. I go downstairs to make myself something to eat. I put together some ramen with plenty of cabbage before bringing it back upstairs with me, still in the pot. Hey, can I get off topic? I know it's been a while, all right? But, so I was on a family trip and we, we had a burger and we stopped by a restaurant it's like an Asian restaurant this is in Wisconsin by the way so it's an Asian restaurant that sells burgers they have Korean barbecue burgers Japanese katsu burgers and other Asian burgers I had the everything had cabbage I'm like what why is there cabbage on everything everything had cabbage even the Japanese katsu burger had like katsu Japanese katsu sauce uh, you know obviously fried pork Japanese katsu, pork, whatever. Katsu don pork. And cabbage. I told him no cabbage. No cabbage. I think, uh, I think Asian people love cabbage. Cause growing up, my family likes to eat Napa. Napa cabbage. I do remember that. They like to eat cabbage a lot. They like to put meat, fold it in the cabbage. Like the cabbage, like a, like a bread or whatever. They fold it and they eat that shit. I don't eat cabbage. I grew up with everyone around me eating cabbage. I looked at it. I'm like, I'm not eating that. <laughs> I like, yeah. I just take the meat. I'm the only one in the family that does not eat cabbage. I'm American. I'm sorry. With katsu in Japan, they usually usually serve cabbage. I think Asian people love cabbage. It's even uh, in Korean foods. I turn on the TV and begin watching while eating ramen straight from the pot with a pair of chopsticks. That's a two hour holiday special on. I savor the ramen, which somehow remains hot the whole time while engrossed in the program. The show itself is horrifically boring and cliche. It's honestly ridiculous that actual adults could have their lives so easily turned inside out by some sultry affair. Sure. What makes what would make a level headed dude quit his job over a woman anyway? I can't help but see the protagonist as a show of the show as a ridiculous idiot. Hey, did we watch this already? Deja vu. Once I finish eating, I leave the TV on but turn off the lights in my room and get into bed. I remember the story now. We ditch our girl on Christmas. Oh the sting! Oh no, the wounds are opening up. I remember the story now. How dare he? Oh, but he can't. I don't know. I just keep going. Yeah, the protagonist is an asshole. I feel warm. I watch the constantly shifting colorful lights reflect on my wall from the glow of the television screen until sleep overtakes me. Are we in New Year's? What day is it? Because we ditched her on Christmas. She called us. Yeah, we're at New Year's now. Winter break arrives, quickly followed by the New Year. 
though the days surrounding New Year's Eve end up being quite a mess. Sumi, along with a couple of his close friends, basically crashed my place with joyful abandon for three days and nights. Well, they weren't actually that loud in their constant partying, but they leave a formidable pile of empty bottles around the katatsu. His question is like a wake up call, immediately sobering me up. Sobering? What you guys been drinking, huh? うまくいってんだろ。いや。お前、クラスの長森さんファンの期待を裏切るような真似すんなよ。長森さんファンはみんな王城際よく、お前に長森さんを託した気分でいるからな。Guys like that really exist. I figure everyone wanted us to break up as quickly as possible. 長森さんファンはみんな順調なんだよ。だから長森さんなんだろうけどな。the word naive drive me nuts. How is it possible to remain that unaware of the world? So, when I'm confronted with na naivety, all I want to do is destroy it. Let's make a fresh start by celebrating Christmas together. That's what I told Nagamori on the phone. <laughs> you can hear the excitement in her voice, even over the phone. Yeah, I feel bad the other day. Wait, Christmas? Wait. Oh, dude, she loves him, man. That's what makes it frustrating, right? She can never get mad at him. It's so... It's so hurtful to watch. She's so sweet. If Nagamori was a little devious, right? And dislike... You know, if I could dislike the character a little bit, I wouldn't feel bad for her. But you can't, you can't find anything to dislike. She's the nicest, sweetest girl in the whole visual novel. She goes along with every scheme you do, every bullshit you do. She starts to always make you feel company because she feels she doesn't want you to feel lonely, right? She eats lunch with you even before going out. She goes out of her way to wake you up every morning to walk to school with you. If they like make a make her make her a little bit dislikeful, whatever, right? I'll be like, alright, but because she's such a sweetheart, dang man, he's getting her hopes up again. Is he gonna lie? Please don't betray her hopes and expectations. We had to do over celebration at school. I'm gonna go all out with decorations, so get ready for a big surprise. I'll try. Nagamori laughed in response. Need me in the main gate to the school around 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Oh, please don't. Please don't ditch her, man. Don't stutter up. I won't. I've been looking forward to that day for a while now. Because that's the day I'll be able to decimate not only Nagamori's naivety, but her naive view of the boy she adores. <sighs> Fuck. Please. Please, game. No. Hey, who wrote this story again? Was it. Was it Jen Mighty? I have to know again now. Dude. You think there'll be a happy ending? I hope so. Like, dude, I know you gotta make it tough, but he's the one that's causing problems. Right? Usually we solve the heroine problems. What's her what's her first name? You never call her by her first name. Mizuka. Look at that, she's always by his side. Mizuka, let's see. Jun Maide. Jun Maide wrote this. Usually, I'm used to visual novels where it's the heroine at fault and the main character comes in and saves the day. I do read some visual novel where the main character's at fault and the heroine saves the day. 
That happened a couple of times. But this is a visual novel where the main character is fucking things up just to fuck things up. The last one I read that's like that was like school days. Every time I choose a different answer, the dude trying to fuck something. But it's not that type of visual novel. So let's keep reading. Maybe they explain why he act like this. Because yeah, I hope it's uh. Come on, man. Damn, dude. All she want to do is just be with you, man. Sorry, my bad. Nagamori is dressed in her usual clothes. She's holding a wrapped gift in her hands. Oh, she got him a Christmas present. Should we head on inside? <laughs> it's early evening when we step inside the empty school. The silence that fills the hall seems to make it feel even colder. She's so excited and happy. You have to wait and see. We can see him walking down the pinch black hallway. Could she be afraid of the dark? She stepped closer to me and hold my hand. Was it less out of fear of the darkness than more from being left behind? I decided not to ask. Finally arrived at our classroom. I stopped just in front of the door. Peering into the darkness, it's almost hard to believe this is the same place we come to every day for school. The desk stands still. It's like silent sentinels. I said blocking the way and the anyone who dares trespass. But that's not really what's going on, and I alone know that. Yep, this is it. She waits for me to open the door. So I drag her into the room, which I unlocked earlier in the darkness. She squeezed my handbag, silently trusting me. What he's going to do? The corner of the classroom is incredibly dark. Since it's too far back for even the moonlight to hit it, I press Nagamori up against the wall. Were you lonely, Nagamori? Were you in pain? Never mind, it's not important. I squeeze her hand even harder than before. She squeezes mine back in response. That's when I step back. Another body takes my place. What? No! Wait a minute. But with her eyes still not yet, just in darkness in the classroom, she had no idea what just happened. She doesn't believe that I'm still standing there holding her hand. Finally, she has a man heavy breathing, one who isn't me. Though she has no way of knowing if it's not coming from me. All I can feel is her hand squeezing mine. That trusting hand of hers. What would happen next? Dude! What the hell? Squeeze her hand. Nagamori's hand. Squeeze mine. Oh no! Jun Mighty! What the hell is this? Oh, I exited. No! No! Jun Mighty! Jun Mighty, no! No, alright, we won't. We won't look at it. We'll look after. I was going to look at the sexual content because the original version is rated, you know, 18, but no way, right? I can feel how much she trusts me. Pain. What is this pain? Deep and unbearable. Jin Maide never did this before, right? In any of the other ones. I don't remember that happening in air. I don't know about canon since I only watched the anime. I don't remember that happening in Clonade. Little Busters. What the hell? In that moment, all I feel for her is. Uh, I shake her off and immediately slam my fist into the wall in front of me. I grope for the light switch and my fingers immediately slide it over. Then. What the fuck happened? <gasps> the hand of Nagamori body is in mine. And now, with the lights on, it's obvious. She shoots me a look of incredulous disbelief. As if to ask how I could do this to her when she trusted me. Oh. What? Alright. Well, this is ready to eat for everyone. Let's see. Did he... What the hell? 
Let's see. Oh, what am I doing? Wrong one. Did he? They would say it, right? Wait, what? Oh, what? I thought this was already 18. Is this how it happened in the original too? I don't think they have H scenes. Do they? They do, explicit. it. Right. Hmm. Uh. All right, well, I guess let's keep reading. I don't know what happened in the original. You think in the original they went further? She still doesn't seem to fully understand what's going on. But the truth is right here in front of her. She'll get it eventually. She realized what I did to her. What? Dude, that's not cool, man. That's not cool. That's like borderline, you know, R-A-P-E. No, that is R-A-P-E. What the fuck? You can't do that. I see her thin lips move, but before her words reach my ears, I run from the room. I race through the hall, down the stairs, and past the shoe rack. What the hell happened? Hey, she hears a man heavy breathing up against her on the wall. I hate this main character, bruh. Nah, man. Fuck him, bruh. Fuck him. No way. You know, I drop a lot of visual novels. And the character's like this shitty. Like, come on, man. That's not cool at all. Even the other one, that's even though that's supposed to be supposedly funny. Remember the other one? What's the other one called? It's like a fantasy one with the Sam and Kagura character designs. Even though I really like the character design, I'm, I really like Sam and Kagura character designs. The main character let the girls get fondled from tentacle monsters on purpose. I guess that's haha, ha ha, gotcha, ha ha. But I'm like, no, dude, you just basically, they got R.A.P.E. by tentacle monsters because of you. You did that on purpose. That's fucked up. Damn, man. You think he can redeem himself? Right now, I think he's the worst key main character ever just because of this scene. That's really not cool. So he stopped holding her hand, slammed his fist in front of the wall, and then turned the light switch on. The hand on Nagamura body. Dude, he was filling up her already, dude. So the stranger, right? The double, the Kohei double, he already touched Nagamori. No way, bruh. And probably in the 18 plus, they probably went further. No way, man. No way. Why did Jim Mighty do this? What? And now he's running. It took me until now to realize I loved her. Nah, fuck you. Fuck you, bro. No. No. I really did love her. And I wanted her to love me more than anyone else. I want to experience that for myself. To start dating and going closer. To have her dote on me and only me. All I did was continuously spit on her kindness. While wanting her to shower me with love at the same time. 
It was the only way I knew how to get her to do that. No way. This dude is beyond stupid. What? Nah. Such an idiot. I can't believe it took me this long to notice. And now she's gone. I think they did it. Hey. I think they did it. I think in the 18 plus version, they probably did it, dude. And he watched. He probably watched. Because he wouldn't he wouldn't believe it like that. Right? He wouldn't be strongly hurt if he that the stranger was only touching her. I think they probably went further, and that's why he's strongly hurt that he could say that she's gone, right? Because something must must have happened. Something unforgivable must have happened for him to think that she can never forgive him. A slight touch from a stranger is because this is ready to eat for everyone. Something deeper happened. And the only way we could know is we played the original. But because I never played the original, I don't know how far they went. But I I think they probably went further. Something unforgivable happened and they censored it. Obviously, because Ready E. So, we just got to assume the worst. She probably got R-A-P-E. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. I would, if this wasn't stream, and when I'm doing this for you guys, I think I would have. All F4. Junmaide, what the fuck? Probably finish it, I'm not going to lie. Because it is a Junmaide classic, so. I lost my beloved Nagamori. What could I do at this point to make it up for her? Nah, dude, you gotta leave. That's what you gotta do. To atone for my actions. To gloss over the ugliness. So I can have her company for a little longer. I know what I'm doing. I'm using the pretense of atonement just to have her in my life a bit longer. I'm sorry. I'll be there for you until you find someone else who makes you happy. I hope you find a nice guy. Like him, for example. Who's him? The the random dude that just fell up on her. Stranger. What? Oh my god. This guy is a bitch. Excuse my language. He got me cussing a lot. Dude. Honestly, anyone would be better than me. Well, no shit. No shit. At this point, yeah. But the only person I want is you, Kohei. If it's not you, then I'm not interested. Nagamori, I despise myself. I'm such a hopeless idiot to even dream of hearing those words. It's nothing more than conceited egoism. What I subjected her to in that room goes beyond the realm of what can be, of what can be forgiven. Dude, yeah, I, and it, it just assumed, dude. He crossed the line. It was more than just touching. Let's just assume that. Because if he, if he can't... Conf if he say it like that, something something really went down in that scene. Unfortunately, we can't know because it's censored. So I'm a complete screw-up. If I truly loved her at all, I voluntarily removed myself from her life. All right, you got to do it. Usually, I would disagree and say, no, you can make it up. You can atone for me, but I'm like, nah, not this time. You're, you're a fucking idiot, dude. What the fuck? What? You stood her up on Christmas, call her back, take her to a basically a back alley, for a random guy to assault her. What the fuck? <laughs> oh man, and I hate this part even more now. She's going to still love him, right? No way. I hear heavy breathing. Why did I come here of all places? I should have run somewhere further away to a place she doesn't know. Dude. She's too nice. She's like Sakura and Face Thing Night. So far, she's not a Yandir. I did far worse to simply leave you behind. And she knows that. 
That's why I was afraid to allow myself to do that. Damn, dude, she loves him no matter what. Dang, this hurts me as a viewer. Because I like this character, Nagamori. I talked about how much I liked her. Compared to the other heroines so far. Because obviously we're in a Nagamori route, but... No, man. Because I knew she would forgive me. Damn. That's what he's scared of, too. She's too soft. I'm breaking up with you. I tell her without turning around. I felt something press up against my back. I think it's Nagamori forehead. I'm sorry, I ruined Christmas this year. Her voice is muffled against my back. It's not fine. Do you understand what I did to you? Do you understand anything, you stupid idiot? I turn to shove Nagamori off of me. I've been a total asshole to you. I didn't have any plans on Christmas. I knew you were waiting for me, and I chose not to go. And then tonight, I was going to take you into a dark room and have someone else use your body, knowing you trusted me completely. And I was planning on tricking you, knowing you'd do anything I told you to, on standing right there while I watch it happen. Damn, dude. Shaking my head. Watch this. Watch he not do this to any other heroine. Only Nagamori. The character I happen to like. Man, this is some bullshit. What kind of sick freak I am? Am I? Say something. I need you to say something. Maybe she likes that. Damn, dude. Damn, this hurts. Why is she so nice? Ha! I exhale and a small white cloud floats up before me. Yeah. I know. Me too. Okay. Damn. I listened to her as I gazed out in the distant night scope. My vision blurred and fuzzy. I don't want anyone else but you either, Nagamori. be with you because I want to be we snuggled together beneath the cold winter sky I'm glad nothing happened the only thing I wanted was to keep her in my life in that moment I vowed to myself I'll do whatever I can to make things right dead what's today January 8th I don't know how I feel about this Damn, dude. I'm so pissed. I don't know how I feel about this. You think they'll give us a proper explanation? Hey. They gotta be more to this than him being a fucking idiot, right? Right. Maybe he has a mental condition. It's morning. The new semester starts today. I found myself waiting at a certain spot on the first day of the new school year. Yo, morning. Oh, Damn, dude. This, can we swap main characters? Can we have, uh, Tomoya? Tomoya is the main character. He will never do that. None of the fucking other June Light at work. None of the characters would do that, right? I don't remember all their names. But the white haired dude from Air, he would never do that, right? He's so fucking nice. Right? 
He's stingy and greedy. Hey, but he's nice. Tomoya is an asshole too, right? But he would never cross that line. He's a gentleman. Rika, Rika, Rito. Rito would never do that too. Hey, dude's borderline female. Now I guess that doesn't mean anything, but he's nice too. They're all nice. This guy, this guy got mental issues, bro. Maybe, maybe he is Tsunahara. <laughs> maybe he is. No, fuck that. Tsunahara is a better character than him. Remember Tsunahara stood up for his little sister? Tsunahara is 10 times better than Kohei. Kohei is a bitch. What the fuck? Maybe I'm jumping to conclusion. Maybe he'll get better. He'll get better. We just gotta see the other routes. Just as I expected, Nagamori can't hide her surprise at seeing me. Isn't it obvious? I was waiting. Yes, for you. Yep, could be. Is that a problem? No way. Why was he so mad at the beginning? When they started going now? It's been a while since we did play this. Because I did take a long break. I'm trying to remember in my memories. Did it have any proper explanation of why he was so mad? Well, it's like fear, right? At first, I was like, maybe it's fear he, he doesn't want to lose his best friend. But now I'm like, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. Yeah, well, good. Well, I'm glad the purple hair, the pink hair girl is not a heroine. He does not deserve her. He does not deserve anybody. What a bitch. I heard you the first time, dummy. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> well, Junmaide only did three characters. Maybe this is like Junmaide early works and NTR was really huge in the 90s, right? You know NTR is huge in Japan. It's different. But maybe maybe Jermaine is trying to satisfy a certain genres so the visual novel will sell. So he had to include it. You know the there's two writers, so we got let's do the other writer after this round. We'll do the other round. We didn't have to compare. What the hell, Jun Maide? What the hell was that? Our exchange leaves me feeling uncomfortable. Every single move she makes is brand new to me, as are my reactions. Shall we? <laughs> oh, man. He does not deserve to do any of this to her. Man. I can't believe he did that. That's going to forever stop my wounds. Nagamori is in the middle of one of her stories when I suddenly grab her hand from behind. What, what's wrong? I'm pretty embarrassed myself. But despite Nagamori's apparent surprise, I try my best to continue the conversation as straight face as possible, though I do stumble slightly. Oh, now he's trying to act like her real boyfriend. After everything he did. No way, man. So, what happened to your friend? I can't even be happy about this. There's no way they're gonna go back to normal. Like none of that happened. I'm listening. Yeah? Just like that, we end up walking along silently while holding hands. It's awkward, a little too awkward. I never thought the simple act of walking along side by side while holding hands could possibly be like this. The fact that she's holding on tight enough that I can't easily shake her off only seems to make the entire situation worse. <laughs> What's up? You know, Japan has a different definition of cheating. I was watching a YouTube video and it's not, obviously it's not everyone opinion in Japan. It's like four people 
they they interview like four random people off the street and they explain their view on cheating so they based on that video what they said and they live in J japan they're japanese people they said that as long as there's no emotion into it and they're physically having a relationship right they don't consider that cheating an example a little bit spoilers on phase zero remember kodisuku he had two girls right he had his wife iris phil the one he, where he had a uh, with his daughter um he made a baby with her right they made a family and then he has a what do you call it a mistress right the short green hair girl where he just make love to her emo not emotionally physically that's it no emotions attached so japan don't consider that cheating he's just relieving stress is it the same thing they never asked it is it the same thing about what about the japanese guys did they did they consider cheating and someone uh someone sleep with their wife but there's no emotion behind it but they consider that cheating uh, I mean it's not obviously it's not right one way or the other right if the husband cheats he's a scumbag at least to me if the wife cheat it's fucked up but I'm not going to lie. I feel like everyone deserves a second chance. I'm a little bit. I guess, I guess I'm the opposite. Like the husband, I feel like stricter, right? More the wife is like, I feel more. I feel a little bit soft for it, right? More lenient. Like everyone deserves a second chance because it happens. I don't know. I guess everyone has a different view on cheating. I like guess depending on who, right? And how much you actually love the I mean that's uh that's such a that's such a different word too. Everyone meaning of love is different. <laughs> you sure? <sighs> What's wrong? <laughs> I'm hungry. In order to try and hide my own embarrassment, I look away while mumbling something nonsical. Man, I don't like this character anymore. Fuck this character. <laughs> Yo, I hope they redeem him. Oh, man. Can't believe he let that happen. When school is over, I get ready to leave and look for Nagamori, but she's gone. I really hope they tell us that he got like a mental illness or something. There has to be something. I figure she must have gone to her after school club, but as I leave the classroom, I find her waiting for me. You were out here this whole time? Mm. You could have met me at my desk like you usually do. Yeah? Waiting for me out here seems way worse if you ask me. <laughs> Maybe, but still. We're the perfect example of a peaceful relationship. You think something's gonna happen? Story's not over yet. I wonder how they're gonna end this. Oh shit. How do I do this? Should I make myself the sun? I'm the way back. Huh? I feel like I can see the way back. So yeah, I, I left for some place far away that day. Huh. When the sun sets and I look up at the sky, it's different from how it used to be. It's a continuation of a sky that exists in the life headed in the opposite direction. Because I left on that day, I will never be able to return to a place I want to go back to. I crossed the ocean, and now I live in this strange town. Dude, who's the main heroine? Right? So... Can I spoil? 
I guess I don't want to spoil the rest of the key studio stuff. But it's always a secret heroine, right? In Air, there was a secret heroine that you didn't meet until a true ending or a true route. Clonad, I don't want to call her heroine, but it's a secret character that you won't meet till a true route. Little Busters, I guess there is no secret character, right? But there's a secret twist at, until you don't find out it's a true route. And then uh, rewrite. I guess you see this character every time, but she doesn't really, you don't really interact with her until true route. And that's all I could think of. Jim, I didn't do rewrite though, so I guess that doesn't matter. So this, this might be a secret character too. To the city where I was born and where I spent my childhood, it fills me with sadness because I know I experienced true love and warmth while I was there. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. I tried as hard as I could until the very end. Back then, I did what I could, hoping that I might remain in my city. Not an attempt at denying the existence of this world. But more that I hope that by recognizing this world, I could stay in the other. But didn't work. It's just a part of me wants to know, if I had tried harder, would I have been able to remain tethered to that place? It's not, but I want to know if it was possible, if there was ever a path that didn't necessarily lead me here. Because if that's true, then it's frustrating to think that the only reason I'm here is because I wasn't able to form the bond necessary to stay there. What do you think? Born from his Damn, he's God. I guess a part of me always knew. But even if I was destined to end up here, that doesn't mean I can destroy the world. In fact, I think I can. can never end. What does that mean? <laughs> I know it's translated right there, but I feel like it's another meaning. It's like unending. It can never end. Whatever. Oh, just like the ocean. The ocean feels like that too. Where it's never ending. What day is it? The ninth Saturday? Okay. I think that's like a metaphor of the ocean. The sound of my curtains being yanked back like usual, followed by a piercingly bright light. Mm. Ah, what the heck? I suddenly feel a weird sensation on my cheek and practically leak out of bed. What did you do? She gave him a morning kiss. Don't tell me you kiss me. <laughs> <Ping pong. Aww. laughs> Damn, dude, I like her so much. If they're willing to forget, I guess I can too, right? Go back to sleep. Yeah. I mainly fall back asleep. Zzz, make me. Zzz. Damn, I wish it was like this in the beginning. Actually, never mind. Nagamori was not expecting me to sit up that quickly and ends up falling face first into my pillow. What are you doing? Mess with her a little. Well, that's pretty embarrassing. 
having someone dodge a kiss like that. I can't wait to tell everyone at school what just happened. You really messed up big time. Hey, don't come any closer. Nagamori jumps onto the bed with enough force to send me flying backward. I bonk my head against the wall. That hurt you, dumb. Whoa! Oh. What happened? Nagamori's face is suddenly right in front of mine. Oh. <laughs> it's a kiss part of this whole doing whatever it takes thing. Aw. Mm. Oh. What do you think I'm waiting for? <laughs> Go impatient and grab the back of Nagamori's head and put her face towards mine. Our front teeth ends up bumping each other. But at the end of the day, it's still a kiss. A proper one, with my lips fully pressed against hers. The way she tastes and smells is nostalgic in a way. She doesn't break the kiss even after I remove my hand from her head. And since my head is already pressed against the wall, there's nowhere for me to go. Damn, she got that morning breath. Well, I mean, he got the morning breath. She finally pulls back. <laughs> oh, she looks so happy. She looks so cute with her cheeks flushed bright red. I kind of want to tease her a little. You really took your time. Yep. I couldn't move. You attempt to change the subject is obvious. She jumps to her feet trying to hide her embarrassment. I like angry uh, Nagamori. She's cute too. Be prepared for more through thorough interrogation later. I take my bag and clothes from her before leaving her with those final words. Nagamori's scent still lingers in my nose. <laughs> Don't give me that. You know the reason it's suddenly so late is because you got that caught up in kissing me. Says the person who had me pinned against the wall so I couldn't move? Uh oh, I think I went a little too far. By the way, do you have any plans after school today? Yeah, I guess you won't have time then. I was just thinking maybe we could go somewhere. Yeah. I was just thinking about it though. Will do. Ooh, we another day done and ready. It seems like the days have been zooming by lately. Maybe because of how happy and content I am. See you later, Nanase. I quickly scoop up my bag and get to my feet. Hi, hi. Sayonara. What's this plan? Okay. Can we go after you're done? Okay, wanna meet somewhere? On top of the hill in the park at half past one. Yeah, See you then. I watched Nagamori head into the direction of her club. Then I walked the other way towards the stairs. I changed into my regular shoes before heading out through the dessert did entranceway. It's unusually warm for this time of year and there's no wind. It's so nice out that I decided to head downtown for a bit. I come across a fancy upscale store and stop in front of the door. Hmm, I find it hard to go in being a guy here all by myself. 
After a few moments of deliberation, I realized it'd probably be more awkward if I stay out here forever, so I take a deep breath and open the door. Just as I expected, the store is overflowing with all manners of round, pink, headache-inducing objects. Feeling slightly feverish, my eyes sweep the expensive-looking inventory. I'm here for a present for Nagamori. Though I refuse to admit it out loud, today is basically Christmas Part 2 for me and my attempts to make it up for the original one. So I want her to wear nice clothes instead of my uniform and bring a proper present for her when she shows up. The problem now is that I have no idea what to get her that make her happy. I don't understand the psychology uh, that makes a woman like flowers and stuffed animals and so on, so I can only see my attempt at picking a gift ending a failure if I left to my own devices. To make matters worse, Nagamori usually complains about how terrible I am at picking out gifts. As such, I decide it makes m sense for me to take an opposite approach and pick out whatever I think is the most hideous. It should work in theory, but then we run into a question, at which point do our sensibility cross? For examples, before me lies a box labeled as an assortment of lifelike poop truffles, which to me is obviously disgusting, but would Nagamori like it? Nagamori, here, I got this for you. Yeah, go ahead. Russell, Russell, Russell. Nika. Genki Kawaii. Genki Kawaii. What'd you say? I like that. I never heard that before. I like that. I'm happy. I like that word. Those two words together. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Let's see. <laughs> Don't eat them too fast or you'll choke. There's plenty of lifelike poop truffles to go around. The thing about it makes me want to hurl. There's no way in hell I'll get her anything involving lifelike poop, no matter how happy she might be. Also, Nagamore isn't the type of girl who loses her mind over poop truffles, no matter how lifelike they may be. Crap, what should I get her? As I stand there with a look of utter mental anguish in my face, one of the sales clerk noticed me and walks over to help me out. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Like this is obvious enough at this point that there's no point denying it. Uh, yes. If I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't have bought it already. Something that'll make a girl happy. I blurt out and immediately read it. That's basically the same as saying I have no freaking clue what to get her. She immediately begins her spiral, like she was waiting for me to say those magic words. Crap, at this rate things are going, she's going to end up picking out Nagamori gift instead of me. Am I nothing more than a wallet and just tra transaction? Oh yeah, that's right. She loves cats more than anyone I know. She also hosts a record of girls who adopted the most cats over three consecutive days. Of course, she has those three cats. So this would be a perfect gift. I reach out toward the shelf of flown cats. I chose one of the bunch before thrusting it at the hapless store clerk. I want this one! Whoops. No matter how hard you squint, it's still a rabbit. Shit. Hang on. She takes the small rabbit from me and heads towards the cash register. Oh, wait. That's not. Oh. Wow. This shit's like 66 bucks. Well, I guess yen's not that strong anymore. So it's like probably like 50, 40 ish. Oh, God. And it's expensive. I found myself standing there in shock as I watched her deftly wrap up an incredibly expensive toy rabbit. Doza. I received this beautifully wrapped rabbit along with my change. <sighs> On my way out, I barely pressed the urge to kick the crap out of a bunch of smaller looking rabbits 
who are just hanging out and seemingly mocking me. Among the bunch, I spot a sign with a psychopathic tagline. I can talk! And a short explanation of his voice recording capabilities. That would explain the hefty price tag. At any rate, I managed to get the gift. And whether Nagamura likes it or not, I pick it out all by myself. So I have a good feeling about it. Though and nothing else, I feel pretty confident Nagamori will probably like anything that I can give her. That's why I can give her this stuffed rabbit with pride. And as luck would have it, my gift comes with the ability to make it something truly special and one of a kind surprise. There's no way I'm going to let it go to waste. Yukiko is nowhere to be seen when I get home, as usual, and there's only enough stuff to make it a light lunch. I decided to leave a scant ingredient we have in the fridge. I'm planning on taking Nagamori out for lunch, so I don't want to ruin my appetite. I head to my room, take off my shirt, and drape it over the back of my chair, along with my bag like I usually do. Then I sit down on my bed and unwrap the gift that I just purchased not too long ago. As long as I rewrap it to look exactly the way it was, my surprise won't be ruined. Though, looking at the rabbit is a, in a different light, I'm starting to deeply regret my decision to purchase it. But it's fine, I'm going to breathe life into you, you stupid rabbit. And you tell that dummy Nagamori how I feel about her. But first, I have to figure out a name for you. Hmm, what would be a good name? Attila the Bun? Attila the Bun. That's my uh, first SSR and fake grand order. Attila the Bun. The bun coming from Bunny, of course. It makes sense in a straightforward, just like me. Through trial and error, I found myself immersed in a process of voice recording. When I finally wrap it up, I look at the clock, only to realize it's almost already 1.30 p.m. Crap, I gotta go. I finally rewrap a tell of the bun and hurriedly get changed. I don't usually wear my regular clothes around Nagamori, which is why I make an effort to look nice. When I finish getting myself together, I tumble down the stairs and head to the front door. Instead of putting on my usual sneakers, I pick up the nicer leather ones. I take them from the shoe rack and leave in a hurry, my shoes only halfway on. I turn right instead of taking the usual straight path. Down the road of inevitable tardiness, 150. I'm making her wait for me yet again, but I guess it's par for our for the course of our relationship. I run up the hard as I can do some staircase before racing in the direction of our meeting place on top of the park hill. Ha <sighs> ha wheeze wheeze. Undo my collar button as I start to catch my breath. Crap, my hair is probably a mess by now. But I don't have any mirrors on hand, so I'll leave it for now and look for Nagamori. I don't see her anywhere. In fact, there's no one in sight except an old man walking his dog alone on the path that runs alongside the park. What an idiot. I rushed for nothing. Evidently, even Nagamori is running late. She probably took into consideration that I'd naturally be 30 minutes late. I guess that's why. Even she's gotten a bit more disrespectful lately. I sit down on the edge of the fountain and wait. It's pretty uncurious to be a guy dressed to the nines while holding what clearly is a gift and also clearly waiting for the other parties to show up. Hurry up and get here already, Nagamori. I'm under Emerald as I continue to wait. I look at my wristwatch. Half past two. She's an hour late. I'm definitely going to rag her on her when she finally shows up. Damn, dude, why do you think she's late? I look at my wristwatch, 3 p.m. on the dot. Crap, I'm so hungry. Come on, Nagamori. It's officially snack o'clock. Damn, a taste of his own medicine, right? I look at my wristwatch, 4 p.m. Come on, pretty soon it'll be closer to dinner than lunch. I left the house plan on eating both lunch and dinner. By this rate, it looks like I'm going to be stuck with a late night snack. Damn. Oh, I feel something hit my nose. I look up at the sky. 
As I do, I feel the same something hit on my forehead and cheek. Rain. I didn't bring an umbrella. What the heck, Nagamori? She's probably waiting just like this for hours when I stood her up the other day. Knowing her, she probably stood around like an idiot waiting. And because she's so stupid, she most likely waited for me two or three hours. She was probably waiting for me just like I'm waiting for her right now, all dressed up and holding a huge gift. So I'm going to keep waiting too. Because if she's an idiot, then so I am. I'll wait for as long as it takes. Oops. The scattered raindrop turned into downpour. All I can do is sit hunched over my gift as I try to keep it from getting away. Brr, I'm cold. Hurry up and get here, Nagamori. I'm hungry and my clothes are soaked down to my underwear. Ah, achoo! Oof. The next thing I know, I'm face down on the ground. I must have passed out at some point. And of course, now my gift is all wet. Crap. Well, whatever. It's your own fault for leaving me out here, Nagamori. Brr. Shiver, shiver. It was just past six in the evening when Nagamori found my limp and broken body. Or something like that. You dummy. Now we all have time for his late dinner. It's probably what I said as I ran on deliriously. Hmm. Honestly, I'm surprised. As if I'm paralyzed, every joint in my body creaks with dull pain. I don't even have the strength to sit up. But I don't want to take the day off from school. Because if I do, I won't be able to see Nagamori. I want to spend a little time apart as possible. I'll go, even if I had to force myself to. What happened? Nagamori found his body? Did she bring him home? I didn't know she had it in her like that. Maybe he's not that heavy. I tried to get up by rolling myself off of the bed, and yet I still can't seem to move. My head continuously pound with a dull roar as the world spins around me. Everything around me suddenly grows brighter. I'm in my room. Nagamore is there next to me. What's going on? She should be at school right now. She shouldn't be here. Is this a dream? She says. Dream Nagamori is so beautiful. How is it possible for anyone to look this pretty? Oh. I stick my hand out from under the covers, reaching for Nagamori. She noticed and clasps my red hot hand in hers. My expression of concern relaxes into one of satisfied contentment. She brings her face close to mine. She then slides her hand underneath whatever is on my forehead and takes my temperature. Hand feels so nice against my skin. You know, this is a Jun Maide visual novel. You think something fucked up is going to happen? You think they always have a... Do they have a happy ending? Usually. I'm trying to remember. Sometimes. Sometimes they have a happy ending. It doesn't match the OST. They've been playing the same OST since everything got better. Wow, I shouldn't say that. Not everything got better. I guess when he started acting like a real boyfriend, I guess. Maybe that's what's paralyzing my ability to think. I find myself thinking about things I usually never think about. No, that's not right. It makes sense that I'd be thinking about that kind of stuff in the state I'm in. Hey, Nagamori. Huh? Can I kiss you? <laughs> she sounds taken aback. She's so cute. <laughs> but if I could kiss you, it would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> it would. She's squirming uncomfortably and blushing. No matter how many times I say it, she really is cute. Okay. She places a hand on my pillow and leans over me. Then her face blocks my vision and all I can see is her. I hold the back of her head on my hands. Our lips press firmly together with no spare space between. And I wrap my arms around her like I'll never let her go. She tries to struggle out of my embrace at first. 
But after a few moments, she stopped and simply lies there. I tilt my head so that our lips are perfectly aligned, and our kiss deepens. I squeeze her lips between mine, like I'm savoring their taste. I lie there, enjoying her softness. <laughs> your breath tastes like milk, because it's all you ever drink. Maka. Oh, God. Milky breath. Ugh. And then drag Nagamura's body onto the bed next to me. <laughs> oh, God. This is like a test. It'll be hard, very difficult, in fact. But I want to know how deep my love for Nagamori goes. I want to challenge myself. I'm probably thinking this way because of the fever. Actually, no, my thoughts are crystal clear. I push Nagamori down to the bed before straddling her. Oh! What's going to happen now? It's fine. I gotta push myself a little. No, I'm going to. Nagamori warned in her smell that tickles my senses. The way you smell. I want to sleep with her so badly, but the act alone isn't enough to prove my love. Oh, the curtains. Oh, we're on the second floor the first. It's fine the way it is. There's no time for that, because I know that if I walked over to the window, I'll lose whatever nerve I built up and just run from the room. I shake my head. Even just that is too momentum of a task for my weak body. <sighs> the process of keeping my body upright is hard enough as it is. I add the blanket into the mix and it requires more strength than I can muster. I can feel a sick sweat soaking my entire body, but this is just the beginning. No. Damn, dude, she gave you permission. That pointless. If I can't do it now, when I'm feeling like this, then it's pointless. Nagamori. I feel like my vision is growing blurry. Or maybe that's my eyelid are about to fall off. No, Nagamori. 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 I desperately cling to my consciousness as I repeat her name in my head. I'll keep doing my best no matter how much it hurts because I love you. I can do it. What the fuck? What is he doing? I'm not sure if I was able to convey my feelings or if I'm shocked or she's shocked by my determination. Her entire body relaxes and she stops fighting. Meanwhile, quickly nearing the limit of whatever stamina I have left. I slumped down, burned my face on Nagamori's stomach. Damn, he's dead. I'm just gonna rest for a minute. My head feels so heavy. I'm so tired. Nagamori, Nagamori, I love you for as long as I can remember. Having reached my limit, I feel proud to be able to hold her in my arms like this. I don't deserve to hug the person I love, who means the world to me without fighting for it. I'm glad I made it this far. So I continue to hold her, as long as my strength lasts, until I slip into unconsciousness. Is he okay? Hey. Okay. January 12th? What the hell? Maybe he's trying to make up for it. In the end, it was too much for me, and as everyone probably saw coming, my fever returns with a vengeance. I found myself once again stuck in bed the next day. That happened to me. That happened to me like, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I always made fun of main protagonists getting sick multiple days. One in December, one in January. That happened to me in real life. I won't make fun of them ever again. Or oh, maybe I'll make fun of them when I forget about that feeling. Nagamori sticks her head in through the slightly open door. I gave her a blatant look of disapproval. Shake, shake. Mm, I just realized I can't seem to speak. Hey, what come I don't put my camera over there? Hey. Is it because I'm covering some words? I don't remember. Yeah, put it over here. There you go. 
I think it's because I was covering up words. All right, let's see. What that says? Oh yeah, she stood him up. Yeah, dude. I wonder why that happened. But she did carry him, right? Yeah, that's why I don't put my uh, my thing over there. Cause it's not enough room. I can put it on the top right hand corner, but I feel like I don't want to do that. I guess I could. What's on the top left hand corner? I guess I could do that. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> I feel like that, uh, I like putting my camera down. What's that? Her face disappears from view and the door slams shut behind her. I feel like with Nagamori, she has a good reason studying him up, right? You think, you think she's going to give him a taste of his medicine? He already had one, stood him up. You think it's going to snowball? No way, right? Has to get better first. Well, she's certainly not wrong. I just had to take it one day at a time. I'll be able to enjoy my time with Nagamori a lot more once I'm back to normal. I close my feverish eyelids. Thirteen, Wednesday. The sound of my curtains being yanked back like usual, followed by a piercingly bright light. I hear someone whisper in my ear. Mmm, it's morning already. Let's see. Probably. It looks like I finally regained control of my limbs. Moving feels a bit weird after lying in bed for so long, but that's to be expected. Yeah, I'm ready. Damn, this dude didn't shower. Nasty. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. I won't. After all the sleeping I'm done, it's the last thing I want to do right now. I shake my head a few times, but still has a lingering dull ache before getting out of bed. Ah, the joys of youth. What a pleasant and easy recovery. I grab my bag and uniform slung over my chair before following Nagamori down the stairs. Mm. I think I'm still having some side effects. I can't move my arms. No, it's not that bad. It's just a little annoying. Oh, uh, he want her to wash his back. It's like your own personal psychic. So you should have no problem washing me, right? Well, I guess I'm off to the shower all by my lonesome despite having just recovered from a terrible illness. Damn, dude, she is naive. <laughs> wow. Really? No. Seriously, I can't flex my full creep of potential with clothes in a way. Yeah, yeah. I grab a change of clothes and head to the bathroom. Phew, that was a good bath. I walk back into the living room wearing boxers and a t-shirt. Yeah, I must have been filthy. When I drained the bath, the water was pitch black. Are we still good for time? In that case, maybe I'll stop by the batting cage on the way to school. As I change my school uniform, I crack my usual jokes to make Nakamura sign like she always do. Good point. 
Heads for the kitchen, dragging my pants, which I'm still holding in my hand behind me. Huh? There's no breakfast waiting for me. As I notice that strange feeling suddenly comes over me. There's something missing that should be there. It's a surreal feeling that of discomfort that grips my body. Am I feeling this way simply because there's no breakfast ready and waiting for me in the kitchen table? You go as a busy later. I can't fall for not having time to make food for me. And yet it still doesn't explain the strange feeling that something's not quite right. It's a mystery to me. Okay, I'm all set. Let's go, Nagamori. At any rate, since there's nothing to eat, I decided to skip breakfast. Hi, hi. Damn, dude, foreshadow. I head for the door with Nagamori trailing behind me. Alright, I figured I must have lost it somewhere, so you took it, huh? That was mine. It's kind of embarrassing, but it was an impulse purchase. Well, if you like junk like that, you can have it. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. Something like that. She pokes me in the stomach with something. What are you doing? I take it from her and see it's a pair of gloves, and they seem to be handmade. Oh, dude, she has matching pairs. Showering when you have a cold is the best feeling ever? That's because it clears your sinuses if you take a bath hot showers, which I think most people would do. Oh god, they even have my initials. Are you serious? Of course I can, very easily. I put them on my hands right then and there. Ooh, they're very cozy. But also very warm. No, that's not what I meant. But I feel like you're the one teasing me this time. Yeah. Yo, Nanase. お、お、ほら。計算は早いな。いや、あいげす。ちょっと最近苦しくてさ。貸してるかね。返してくれない what? You think they're gonna pull a, uh, you know what? Tomoya after? Huh? Oh crap. What? It is the same author, right? Jun Maide. Oh fuck. Oh wait, maybe because of the gloves. They're pretty nice, right? Tell me how nice they look. Yeah. I'm not lending you any money with that attitude. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of here. I end up dumping all my changes upon my hand and letting Sumi take what he wants. They become fused to my body, so that's unfortunately impossible. Hmm. Psst, Nanase. He opened. <gasps> no way! You think? You think it's the gloves or. Maybe he's hurt. He opened my textbook for me. Come on, please. You're gonna make me mad. I grab her hair and yank it as hard as I can. But at least I tried to. Ugh. But I can't get a good grip with the gloves on. 
I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is he hurt or is it the dumb gloves? I know sitting through the entire class with my textbook firmly shut. I'm facing the wind with the gloves hand are stretched to either side of my body. At any rate, it doesn't look like I'm be able to pull off any miracles today. Not wearing it because I have to. It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but this is just how I am now. <laughs> hmm, really? I think it's kind of charming. But that should reach over and remove one of the gloves. Hey, give it back! The heat enveloping my sweat soaked hand immediately dissipates in the cold air. My hand's gonna get sick again at this rate. Really? Man, this guy's a dumbass. What the hell? What the fuck? I never met a protagonist this stupid before. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's trolling or he's just really stupid. I stuffed the glove into my pants pocket like she just suggested. That's probably a good idea. If you of all people are calling me ridiculous, then I guess it must be true. Is he really that stupid? What the hell? Yeah? Damn. Interesting. The music stopped. My life had reached a point of such tranquil happiness that I naturally assumed I never experienced anything like this ever again. Though I'm fairly certain that joy would continue as long as Nagamura is with me. I have no doubt she'll stay with me forever. I never ask her directly, but that's the feeling I get. She'll be here with me forever, waking me up every morning. With that trademark greeting of hers. And every time as I lie there half asleep, I come with some new response just to annoy her. I assume our days spent together will continue forever. The school days ends and Nagamura is waiting for me in the hallway like usual. <laughs> As I wonder what she's laughing about, I see her face break into a smile the moment she sees me. Well, not like I'm any different. It's impossible for me to keep from smiling at the sight of her. It's that slightly awkward smile which is fairly typical for a young couple in love. A pair of childhood friends laughing together. Should we head home? I walk past her. She hurries to catch up to me. Well, so is yours. We're walking home in the evening glow. I look up the sky in the direction of the sun, which is setting towards the horizon. Oh shit. The world itself is bright red. The world that stretches out endlessly. It looks like I'm back here again. Oh, they're gonna do a little buster. Are they doing a little buster? What are they gonna do? This desolate place. No. I know what this place truly is. And that's what makes it so sad. Oh, fuck, Jumaidi's a fucking genius. Genius storytelling. The last thing I need right now is candy. I know. But I don't want to play. You'll understand once you're older. Hey, did he mean an anime for one? Damn it, you know, visual novels to anime never works out well, to be honest. There is rare occasions, but that's why they're called rare occasions. Unless it's a kinetic visual novel, meaning visual novel with no choices and routes, just one story. I know. 
That's because you're forever stuck as a child. Forever stuck as a child. What? But why not? That girl, that girl's forever stuck as a child. But who's the character talking to her? Wah, wah. I can hear someone crying. Who is it? It's not me. That's right, it's Misao. Oh, who the fuck's Misao? You mean the girl from a uh, little but uh, Clannad? Just kidding. Like always. Wait, who's Misao? Misao. What's the girl name? Misao. What's her name again? Mizuki. Mizuka. Oh, what? Is that his mom? He lived with his aunt, right? So we know he lived with his aunt. I don't think they ever told us what happened to his mom or dad. And now they're introducing a Moto, his little sister. This motherfucker have a voice? Why can't they give him a voice when he's grown up? They kick her for real. Dude, I told you. Trust Junmaide. Trust! I almost lost trust in him when he did the stupidest shit of NTRing uh, Nagamori. そんなのごっこなんて言わないのあんた前は水平チョップごっことか言って泣かしたばっかじゃないのごっこだよ本当の真空飛び膝蹴りや水平チョップなんて真似できないくらい切れ味がいいんだよ。Maybe this guy, he's the thing he did those things. He NTR Nakamori, stood her up on Christmas, did all those horrible things to her. He said because he was stupid. I was like, no one's that fucking stupid. Reading all this shit, maybe he is fucking stupid, dude. He he did a flying knee kick on his little sister. His baby sister. What the fuck? Oh my god. He is stupid. Alright. <laughs> The reason why she always stopped crying so quickly had nothing to do with her personality. It was actually because of what an amazing Onichana always was to her. That's what I like to think. Being raised in a single parent household meant she she grew up never knowing her father. Damn dude, single single mother. Even I only remember him as nothing more than a silhouette at most. I can see his figure moving, but his face is cloaked in shadows. So I felt the need to give her affection like a man would, though it's embarrassing to phrase it that way. There's this thing at school called an open house. It's a day where fathers are allowed to attend school with their kids in order to see what class is like and what they're learning. My dad never once show up to any of my open houses, of course. But whenever I see the other kids with their dads, they always look somewhat uncomfortable, but happy at the same time. No matter how aggravating it might be, they always seem happy to be there. But that happiness was forever a mystery to me. A puzzle I could never solve, because I knew that I would never have another father figure in my life ever again. There was never a familiar face looking back if I turned around. Just a slight disconcerting feeling of being watched. That's how it was for me with every single open house. 
This is why I wanted to give her the type of love that only comes from a man. Because in that way, I hope she would never have to experience the awkwardness of being forced to participate in an open house without a dad. That led to the formation of my master plan. Yes, he is stupid. By giving her a little taste of an uh, iron claw is my new favorite game. そんなものは変装すれば大丈夫だ。背が低すぎるよ。空き缶を足の下に仕込む。そんな漫画みたいにうまくいかないよ。バレるよ。大丈夫。うまくやってみせるよ。本当？あ、だから次の父親さん完備
こんなくだらない本ばっか読んで暮らすお前が見るに耐えなかったからなよかったようんこれで退屈しないで済むよ Unfortunately, the doctors ended up being wrong, and we saw him in the hospital for far longer than anticipated. At one point, she underwent major surgery, and I learned afterward that her stomach was no longer the one she used to have. Oh, what the fuck? Damn, dude. Jun Mai Day. Always coming up with the saddest story. That's not her stomach anymore. That was also around when our mom began spending less and less time at the hospital, choosing to go elsewhere. I honestly have no idea where. She made occasional appearances, babble on incomprehensible nonsense, and then seemingly satisfied leave again. I remember her saying something that preaching the word of God once, though I had no idea what that meant. Oh, dang. His mom. Turning to religion for help. Oh, shit, she looks different now, huh? All of her hair is gone. Oh, dude. You think she has cancer? What is it? Her recent weight loss was one thing, but suddenly faced with a shiny bald head, I didn't recognize her at first. She looks so different from how she used to. Damn, she doesn't have a stomach. As we talk, she rolls the chameleon's toy back and forth in the palm of her hand. Dude, just mighty. Oh my god. Oh, uh, can't be a Jun Mighty story about a sick girl. Yeah. Yeah. I think every story he always have a sick girl, right? Kalanad had one. Air had one. Cannon had one. Little Buster? Was there any sick girls in Little. Oh. Was it the Spiral of Happiness girl? I think she was sick, right? Yeah, she was. What was that her Onichan? I don't remember. I think that was her Onichan, actually. Damn, though. Whenever I come see her, I make sure to never ask if she was suffering or in pain. Mainly because I know that even if I did, she'd just shake her head and tell me no. She didn't want me to worry about her, so I never ask. I know that if she was truly suffering or in pain, she would tell me herself without any prompting, at which point I would comfort her. I'd do what I could to cheer her up. That's what I told myself. The end of the year comes, and Misawa spends New Year's in a hospital. It was the quietest and most low key New Year. Damn it, dude, I hate to do this. Why they gotta translate it like that? Using, uh, I guess that's the old word. All right, whatever. It was the quietest and most low key New Year I ever experienced. Damn. She just w a n t to live and go to school like a normal girl. So, t h n t o n a m u r i d a t a m n a Time seemed to stop from that moment. The disguise that began to assemble for an open house is in a state of disarray in my room. The only thing that seemed to be progressing was Misao's chroniness, as she continued losing weight. That was around when Misao started talking about the open house more frequently, and it led me to actually have hope that would happen this year, without a doubt. New Year ends and the town returns to normal. But the room where Misawa spends her days r e m a i n unchanged. Misawa! Onichan, Mata Kona Jikani. Mata Shijutsuru te kite kitanda. Damn, another one. Mata Dokoka Torunoka? Mm hmm. 
その手術はしないことになったよそうかよかったどんどんミサオのお腹が取られていくようで怖かったんだよ That's fucked up. うんもう心配ないよ本当、よかったよ。うん。Row, row. The two of us fought silent, but the only sound being that the chameleon rolling back and forth in the palm of her hand. お母さんはどんな感じ相変わらずだよ。お兄ちゃん、お母さんのことも心配してあげてね。うん。そうだな。じゃあ、そろそろ眠るよ。あ。She closes her eyes quietly. The chameleon remains in her hand, its tongue sticking out. Her room is eerily silent. Miso. 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 Nani. Oni chan. Yeah. Damn. Nechatta kana to omotte. Oh, man. Um. Nechatte ta yo. Oh, man. Damn, you make me feel bad for calling him a shitbag, right? Because of what he did to Nagamori. Damn, bruh. The month changes again, but nothing changes for us. We saw our birthday passes. And we have a tiny celebration for her at the hospital. And, but I'm the only one who sings happy birthday. And I'm the only one who eats the cake. Roll, roll. Roll, roll. Oni-chan. What? What? I'm going to do it with my father. Today? Yes. Today. The place? ここ他の子はミサオだけ二人だけの父親さん完備ダメよしわかったやろうよかった She beams at me happily I run home grab the disguise I stuff into the drawer and throw it under my arm before racing back to the hospital. I throw in the hospital hallway, making sure everything's in place. I put on a suit, affix the tie, and attach cans to the bottom of my feet. Then, after scribbling a mustache on with magic marker, my disguise is complete. I head to the direction of my sound room, the cans in my feet clanking loudly with each step. I stand in front of a room and knocked, though the sound of me walking is far louder. The music stopped. Damn this music. Now I open the door and step inside. Misao? Misao? Oni-chan. Her face remains slack, with the only movement being her mouth, which smiles happily. As long as Misao never said she was suffering or in pain. Then I made sure to act like everything was fine. So then, yeah, me did the other corona. I stand in front of the wall and look over at Misao, who's lying in the bed. Row, row. The million weakly continues to stick out his tongue and pull it back in. That's the only thing I watch her do. Row, row. Row, row. She intermediately lets out a labored gas for air. I can only stand there with my back against the wall, watching her suffer. The whole situation is ridiculous. My sister is in pain, and all I'm doing is standing as far from her as possible, simply watching her suffer. <laughs> 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 
the chameleon tongue stopped moving. Then the words I've been waiting for spill out from between her lips. And I run over to her. I run to her side, tripping over the can still attached to my feet. I grasp her hand, which is still clinging to the chameleon with both of mine. Damn, where's the mom? I always thought that I'd been an exceptionally good Onichan to her. That's what I wanted to believe. And a part of me wants to think that those final words of gratitude were thanking me for that. Damn, the final thank you. On a day of Misao's funeral, it rained all day. Perhaps that's why it seemed so quiet. Like the rain managed to drown out all sound and emotion. I looked at the coffin with Misao inside, emotionlessly. My mom never showed up. It was in that moment that I felt the pain of truly being alone. Afterward, I found a chameleon toy Misao always playing with in the palm of her hand and I burst into tears. They poured out like a dam had broken. I had lived my life until then, unaware that such sadness could exist. I always assumed Misao would be with me forever. That she would always call me Onichan. And that she would play with that chameleon toy forever. Thinking about Misao's smile no longer fills me with joy. I learned that nothing is forever. And with every loss, comes unbearable grief. It's almost like we live our lives in anticipation of the next sorrow-filled moment. And if that's true, then life is nothing more than misery. Then I want to leave this place. I want to stay right here, so I can be with Misao forever. Wah! Wah! I can hear someone crying. Who is it? It's not me. That's right, it's Misao. Like always. Damn, deja vu! What the hell? Oh! They're pulling a little buster, aren't they? There, there. I say while patting her on the head. Well, I guess this came first. Great. Obviously, this came first. Oh, shit. I want to stay right here when I was happy. That's all I want. I cried so many tears since that day. It's almost like I lived my life trying to find moments here and there where I wasn't crying. I left the town where I'd grown up with Misao and went to live with my aunt. The town was rich with vegetations, sparkling with life in the April sunshine. But it wasn't enough to dry up my tears. Oh, they're not doing that. I thought they were doing a little busters. A part of me began to wonder if I simply cry forever. How many tears can a human body hold? It was there in that town, as I cried my eyes out, that she found me for the first time. And no matter how it was sunny or cloudy or rainy, she was always there with me as I cried. Who do you think that is? That doesn't sound like a... Uh, Nagamori. Every day she finds me in tears, and every day she speaks to me. I never once opened my mouth, and if I did, it was only to sob loudly. There was nothing left of me. I was an empty shell. Yet she continued to stay by my side. As if that didn't bother her at all. I couldn't figure out why. What was she waiting for? What did she want? 
Those were the first words I ever spoke to her. Oh, shit. Oh, you think that's me, Sal? But emotionless. She does kind of sound like me, Sal. I never thought I could ever express how I truly felt in words. But then she said, Exist. She then placed her hands on both of my cheeks, looking at me in the eyes. And then she pressed her lips against mine. Okay, that's not Misao, right? <laughs> what the fuck? What? Sealing her internal pact. Her promise of forever. Oh, fuck. They're in a loop? Who is that? Is that... They look like Nagamori. The last thing I need right now is candy. I don't need stuff like that. What the fuck? What the fuck? Who's Nagamori? Is that why she never leave him alone? Why she's always so nice to him? You'll understand once you're older. No way! You think Nagamori's his little sister? That'd be kind of weird. But what the? F uh, yeah, that'd be weird as fuck. I know. That's because you're forever stuck as a child. Mizuka. Mizuka! That's the uh, Nakamori name! What the fuck? Oh my god! What? A long time has passed. And along the way, I met all kind of people and experienced all kind of things. What the hell? Misao! Mizuka. And along the way, I met all kinds of people and experienced all kind of things. I've grown stronger since then. And I don't cry nearly as much. And for in the four months leading to my disappearance. What? What? Long time has passed. How long? In the four months leading to my disappearance, I made a couple new friends despite my best efforts. A girl who dreamed of being the perfect lady, but always fails. A girl who lost the light in her eyes, but not in her smile. Oh, that's uh, Twin Tail is right. I bet Twin Tail is perfect lady. The girl who lost light in her eyes, but not her smile. That's uh, that's the blind girl, Misaki, right? A classmate who is single-mindedly waiting for something. Classmate. That has to be the twin tail girl then, right? Then who's the first one? I don't know. A girl, one year my junior, who struggles to express herself despite her inability to speak. That's the other girl that don't know how to speak. We saw her before. And despite everything, you always been there with me. Four months of my disappearance? What? Let's keep going. The past four months have practically flown right by. And I can say that I was truly happy. He's gonna die? That's why I was happy. Knowing what awaited me is why I feel such overwhelming sadness. This is a, they're like a little buster, dude. 100%. This is what little buster got inspired from. What? No way. No way. If he dies, that's what Little Buster got inspired from. Hey. Knowing what awaited me is why I feel such overwhelming sadness right now. Knowing I was going to die is what made each moment along the way so unbelievably precious. I don't need the promise of eternity any longer. Which is why I did what I could to form a bond when I had the chance. I...
Mizuka! What? Who is this though? She looks so different from the other Mizuka that made an internal pact of forever. I suddenly shout out her name. Who is she? She looks at me blankly. Mizuka! My mouth is dry. I can feel a lump of spit stuck at the back of my throat. Mizuka, hey! I know exactly what's happening. I'm fading away. That's why everything feels wrong. She looks at me, clearly forcing a smile into her lips. As for where exactly where I'm going, that's the only thing I know for sure. I know exactly where I'm headed once I leave this place behind. The sky. No matter how high you stretch your arms, you'll never be able to touch it. It's not a place you can purposefully seek out, and time doesn't pass there. Once there, you're there forever. The word eternity bind us to that place. The eternal place that exists on the other side of the clouds. The word I saw out on that long ago day. The word born from a singular moment and where I return to when everything ends. That's where I'm headed. Now what? What? You can't do this, can you? Candy! You can't go back like we didn't just see that shit. No, hey, bro. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't know what the hell is going on. It's, I think he's going to die. But it's so much that happened. So they just name all the heroines, right? The girl who wants to be the perfect lady but always fails. You don't know who that is. The girl who lost light in her eyes but not her smile, that's Misaki. Obviously, the blind girl. The classmate was single mindedly waiting for something. Classmate! Oh, that might be the blonde girl. And the girl that wants to be the perfect lady is the twin tail. I see. Okay. And then the Kohai, right? Okay, now we know all the heroines. But they didn't name uh, Nagamori. Mizuka. Mizuka is the one that made an eternal. Wait. Now I'm like, it's so confusing. Is that his little sister or not? What? Who is Mizuka then? Well, we know who Mizuka is. We just saw her. But is she the same person as the Mizuka that we know? Because in the backstory in this route, the way Mizuka and uh, Kohei first met, Mizuka threw a rock on his window and said, let's go play. Right? Oh, didn't she throw candy at him? I'll stay with you forever. Oh shit, well, we'll continue, I guess. I, I hear a Nagamori voice coming from the direction of the bathroom. Okay, I'm going to grab something to eat first. Went over to the kitchen while scratching my head absently. Dude, this is totally... Little Buster is totally inspired from this. <laughs> this is like... Pretty similar. At least the twist. If the world fades apart, there's where Little Buster came from. This is the second day in a row. I look at the sink and notice a single plate and a set of cutlery. Yukiko obviously used them. That means she made breakfast for herself then left. Was there some kind of miscommunication along the way? But I haven't seen Yukiko in a few days at this point, so it's kind of weird that our usual routine would so suddenly change. I should talk to her next time I see her. Then I ask why she stopped making me breakfast in the morning. Maybe the reason is actually surprisingly simple. Like her wants me to try and be more independent. Knowing her, that seems pretty logical. As an independent woman herself, this might be her way of telling me it's time to start fending for myself. But if that were true, wouldn't it make, 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 make sense for her to at least leave me a note or something? It's Nagamori voice again. I know, I'm coming right now. Feel myself rapidly vanishing to nothing. It reminds me of a dream I had once. A very long time. Excuse me, a very long time ago. A leftover joke 
from when I was a kid. If you could live in any kind of world you wanted, what kind of world would you wish for? I suddenly cut her off. Yeah, like for example, when I was a kid, I knew this girl who wanted nothing more than to be a princess in Candyland. Time passed, and thanks to that girl passionate please, her fantastical Candyland became a real place. This is all hypothetical. You had to use your imagination a little. Can you guess what happened next? Did she actually have a choice? No, because of the presence of another character in this story. There was a prince who lives in Candyland. The girl and the prince made a vow that they will live together. The conditions have changed. With that in mind, does that change your answer? Oh fuck, that's her! When that happens, what do you think will happen to me? I uh, mean, the girl in this world? A chill suddenly runs through my body. What the hell is going on? Am I really disappearing from this world? Can a joke I made as a kid so long ago truly have the power to place my continued existence into jeopardy? That's impossible. And yet the way I'm feeling right now, it doesn't seem out of the question. You go forgot about me. Even Nagamore memories of me seem vague and shapeless. Am I really about to leave for that place on the other side of the already distant sky? Hey, Mizuka. Please keep me in your thoughts as much as possible. Because I think about you all the time too. I just want to make sure it's for good reasons and not bad ones. Really? Wow, I had no idea. Though I really wish you would be more open with me and share. Yeah, I need a chair, man. My back hurts. ちょっと今 Damn, she's so awesome. <laughs> but is that really her or fuck? I don't even know what to think anymore. The last part was said under her breath. Her gaze lowered. Do you really worried about that? Bro, you useless loser like me? You're completely out of my league. I'm the one who should be worried about letting you down. Damn, I don't even know if she loves him anymore. <laughs> There's so much going on. Well, I hope so. I find myself looking off in the distance, my gaze unfocused. All I can feel is a glow of happiness in the depths of my soul. Little did I know how precious that feeling was about to become. Because the past promise is about to come back to haunt me. The only thing I can see waiting for me is my unforeseeable future. Lately, it seems like I've been spending most of my breaks sitting on the steps, leading up to the roof, people watching as the other students walk by. It's my way of keeping a cynical view on what's happening to me. What am I even doing here? I ask myself dryly with a smirk. In fact, it's a little ridiculous how no one seems to acknowledge my existence, not even my friends. It's as if I've been completely forgotten. The vivid pain of that realization causes me to chuckle sarcastically again. At the front gates in the morning, in the cafeteria doing lunch, 
walking home after school. I simply stand there as if the other students walk around me, ignoring me. Didn't it, this happen too for another character? Um, Makoto from Canon. I think that happened to her, right? Similar situation. It brings to mind memories of watching video recordings of myself, but sped up. The same artificial lapse of time and loneliness. As the world passes around me. As such, I find myself surprised when somebody actually notices me. It's also ironic in and in of itself. I was waiting for you. Then it makes our meeting even more miraculous. Wanna sit with me? Nagamori sits down next to me. Waiting for some kind of miracle. Yeah. I'm not lying. Hey, Nagamori. I want to be with you forever. I won't you won't ever leave me, right? I felt like I had to ask her that cliche question. Unless I'd be consumed by anxiety. うん。公平がそうしたいならそうするよ。でも私が鬱陶しくなったりしたら正直に言ってよね。公平に迷惑かけたくないし。それまでは絶対一緒にいるよ。あって別に恋人同士でもないのにずっと一緒にいるなんて
It's just, I can't bring my face to face the reality of what's happening to me anymore. I had enough. Let's skip school. Huh? Let's go hang out somewhere. And just us. Please. Damn, you don't even know you have the next day. I can't wait. I can't wait any longer, Mizuka. Uh. She holds out her pinky finger. I suddenly hook my own pinky finger around hers. <laughs> Damn, dude. Red flag. You think that's a red flag? I think it's a red flag. That's qu not quite, though. Because I'm holding on too tightly. I don't want to. Just come with me. Come on, Musica. We can go anywhere we want, even the amusement park. We can ride the roller coasters together, or the Ferris wheel, or even the teacup ride. The one that spins in circles, you know? And I'll spin us as fast as I can, okay? Oh, sorry. So I let go. Sure. Musica runs off ahead of me. I can't bring myself to follow. I just stand there, watching her go. The bell signaling the start of class echoes to the courtyard. By the time she finally looks back, I'll probably be gone. I want to find some kind of connection with someone else. It doesn't matter who. I want to find a reason why I need to be here. Because I don't think there is one, not here. Maybe not anywhere. Generally speaking, there doesn't seem to be any reason for my solitary existence. All I'm doing at this point is wasting time for no reason at all. Without Musica, my beloved Musica, who loves me despite how stupid I am, who cares about me so much, who loves me more than I ever love her, the time I spend doing literally anything is pointless. I have nowhere to go. I mean, of course, because the only place I belong is by Musica's side. The next thing I know, I'm running. Mizuka, I'm taking you with me, no matter what you say. A group of people I know passed me by without even a glance in my direction. Another painful reminder of what's happening to me. But I'll go anywhere if it means being able to take you with me. The pain doesn't bother me at all. Musica. That's when she walks out of the classroom by herself. Where was she planning on going? It doesn't really matter. Whatever her plans might have been, she's coming with me now. But I... I suddenly find myself faced with the one bitter truth I never wanted to experience. When I open my eyes, Musica is gone. All I can see is the wall she's been standing in front of. The last look she'd given me was like that of a stranger. Damn. Oh. Well, I won't let Yukiko hear the end of it when we're finally in the same room together. Though it's not like we ever had a close relationship. I wonder if she's okay. Maybe it's just that she can't afford food anymore. Well, whatever. I'm not really that hungry anyway. I lie down on my bed and give a big full body stretch. Maybe I should just disappear. I got to the point where even my closest family member has forgotten about me. In other words, there's nothing tying me to this world anymore. No one would notice if I floated up into the sky, or fell re resignedly into the deepest depth of the ocean. If I sleep, I can visit that place again. The world on the other side of the clouds, born on that long ago day. The moment that happens, my body will be swallowed up and vanish into nothing. I know that fact painfully well, but it doesn't matter. It can't be all that bad, right? There'll be plenty of time to think. I'll be there for an eternity, after all. I get to explore that other world forever. And I'll be able to take all my good memories of Nagamori with me. You know, I just realized all the Jim Midas stories are pretty similar, right? Air is kind of like this. Canyon to a degree, I guess. 
Clonon had the other world. Little Buster too with the twist. So I can continue remembering all the happy times I shared with her for eternity. Thinking about it makes me feel better. Conjuring up those happy memories. They will be what keeps me going in that eternal world. Going with your head held high because you had a happy life. I feel awful when I wake up. No matter how deeply I may have slept, my body feels exhausted, both inside and out. I wonder if mental exhaustion has an effect on the body as well. I slowly raise my arm, the joint stiff, and brush back my bangs. It wasn't my time, not yet. All I did was delay things a little longer. I put on my house coat before going to open my door as I head for the bathroom. The door is open a crack. Did I forget to close it? Of course not. I made sure, always make sure to shut my door behind me. It looks like there's a sign that I can't stay here any longer. I'm probably nothing more than a burden on Yukiko at this point anyway. I grab my wallet, which I toss into my desk, and accidentally shove it into my back pocket. Then I leave the house. The town I lived in for nine years. As I stand here, finding myself in this situation, a flood of memories rushes into my mind. What part of the city have I yet to see or experience? Streets I never walked down. Shops I never visited. The beginning to a story can happen anywhere. It starts with simple conversation and promise to see each other again. You talk more, learn about each other, and grow closer. No longer strangers, your lives entwine and then begin to change. It's a commonplace occurrence that has been repeated countless times over. And yet, despite all that, I look up at the sky. Even now, I feel like I could fall into it at any moment. It's hard to shake that feeling. Someone bumps into me, then walks away without a word. There are no shackles on my ankles holding me down. There's nothing keeping me here. A part of me knows that if I stretch my arms up and accept fate, this will all be over. I can leave this world behind. There's no coming back. I'm fully aware of that. I know that other worlds exist. I know that as long as I stay here, my existence will be shrouded in painful regret. Oh, Nagamori. I can see on the other side, waiting for the light. It's definitely her. I know our eyes met for a second, but our expression never changed. I guess we really are nothing more than strangers at this point. This was the one harsh truth I never wanted to face. Yet here we are. It's hard to believe this is how our final goodbye would go. The light turns green. We both start walking, pushed forward by a flood of people. I like that the, the light turned. It was green and it turned red because the street light. So the, the, the walking sign probably turned green. Nagamori doesn't look at me, and I don't look at her either, because we're strangers. We'll pass right by each other without a word. There's no pain. Not for her anyway. As we got closer, the distance closes, and then we go our separate ways. Goodbye. The one I loved. The green light starts flashing. Damn, she, she pretended not to know him. The light turned red. Get out the street! That hurts. Let me go. The deafening honk of car horn. Don't worry, I won't run away. I can't run away. I mean it. I do. It's just... Oh, she said that. Right now. All I want to do is wrap my arms around you and hug you so tight. Dude, the car! What about the car? Oh, okay, they're okay. Dude, I thought he I thought he was gonna do something fucked up. He know he always do something fucked up. I thought he was gonna Oh, she got ran over or something. Cause they can't see Kohei. If he hugs her, it's probably like it's like cloak or something. Visible cloak. It's a soft breeze. 
It brings the scent of fresh green leaves and a smell I know very well. That of Nagamori. My beloved Nagamori. Now what? Mmm, it smells so good. I never thought I'd be able to relax and unlap the person I love. She always wakes me up with an angry shout, but not today. She looks sad, right? Today, I can sleep. As I drift off, we share a peaceful conversation together. Hey, Nagamori. I really want to eat okonomikia. Oh, uh, excuse me. Okonomiyaki. I don't know. I just want some. It's a place by that station. Yeah, that place. I know, really good. We should go. I mean it. We, we feign no mercy until the very end. I guess because Nagamori know is what I wanted. Oh! You think he's... Let's keep going. Imagine it's a summer night. We're sitting on a porch, enjoying the fireworks while festival music plays in the distance. I watch the blossoming fireworks silently, and then I disappear. Imagine it's an autumn evening. We're walking along the river on our way home. Dragonflies flip past the pears. The day might be ending, but the world isn't. Imagine in the middle of winter, the city's blanketed in white. We're slipping and sliding on our way to school, chatting about nothing particular as our breath hangs white in the air. Yeah, I'm listening. Imagine in spring, with the world coming back to life. Everything glistens and sparkles in the sunlight. It's dazzling. I meet so many people, all kind of people. Every encounter brings a small bit of joy, and I collect them. I save every single one. Yeah, I know. You are always the center of everything, so precious to me. And in every passing moment, time passes as we get older. And yet I wish the two of us could remain unchanged forever. Only then could I truly be happy. If we could remain unchanged amid the passage of time, even after everything, there's only one thing I can say. And no longer existing is what makes it so special. So incredibly precious. It's gone. Those days we used to spend together are gone. What's wrong, Nagamori? Yeah, you are. What was I talking about again? Okonomiyaki. Oh, that's right. Okonomiyaki. A bird suddenly flies up into the sky from the trees with a loud rustling sound. That's a metaphor. That's him, right? Oh! I knew it! I knew it! I watch a lot of medias. No way! That's it! That's how they're gonna end the story! Damn, dude! This is just like fucking rewrite! What the fuck? What? Damn! He turns to the bird like air. I guess like air. A rewrite. That's just like, uh, I guess I don't want to spoil it. Cause I do want to replay rewrite. I want to replay with you guys. Rewrite. Still had the saddest route. I'm not going to say who, but that's still the saddest route I still read in the visual novel. That shit is so sad. And you wouldn't think it's from that heroine either. This one's still pretty sad too. But damn, you think that's why he also want her to be happy with someone else? Because he unconsciously knew he can't be there for her. 
Shit. Or maybe because he hate changes that much. Because what happened to his little sister. Now we're in Nagamori. Damn, dude. Now what? I've been living a normal life. I tried to reach the same level of normalcy I had before. Granted, there were various reasons why that was impossible. But that didn't stop me from having a positive outlook. Dude, I wonder why he died. Or did he die? Why did he have to go away? I guess we'll know more the more we play. Damn, dude. I knew it. Well, I guess I didn't knew it. I was praying. I was like... I was a little bitter what he did to Nagamori, but I I told myself I told you guys too, let him cook, bro. Let Jumai they cook. He'll he'll do something that make he'll make up for it. He did right there. What a fucking god. The god of visual novels, Junmai Day, one of the goats. So why do I suddenly feel sad? It doesn't make any sense. The gradual changing of the seasons make the passage of time feel almost imperceptible but it is passing I know because of the changing seasons and with each step I move a little further from that day I'm no longer searching for where I was back then and the landscape around me has changed everything changes and fades away leave behind nothing but memories faded sepia toned memories even if I throw myself in head first I know it won't be easy I can feel my heart violently pounding in my chest <gasps> Hey, Nagamori. What? No way. What's wrong? Jun mind is trolling, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, how about we spend the rest of the day together then? Yeah, if we spend the day having fun, I'm sure you forget all about that lousy dream. Great, shall we? <laughs> so many fragments of happiness. These fragments sparkle like tiny marbles. I collect them with Kohi. Kohei. The happiness we collect together is shared between us. No matter which way you look at them, all you can see is joy. <laughs> but when I realized you were turning into a bad dream, I felt as if I lost everything. <laughs> Damn, she was dreaming about having a bad dream. Oh my god. Inception. <笑>大丈夫。みずか。みずか。うん。何にも。本当うん。何にも。大丈夫だよ。Oh! Whenever I feel sad, I talk to my stuffed animal. Hey there, my name is Attila the Bun. Hey,何それ?呪いの言葉を吐く人形。ふふ、私を元気づけてくれる友達だよ。そ、そうなの？そうだよ。ご主人様に似て口の悪い子だけどね。Hey, what's wrong, Nagamori? Not feeling so great. Don't worry, Nagamori. Hey, who turned into a stuffed animal? Oh, yeah, air, right? I think so, right? I think it was. Don't worry, Nagamori. You got an incredibly insensitive and extraordinarily stupid guy by your side. And depending how lucky you are, I might even curse you out and put you down. Or oh, you had to put up with it. You gotta deal with it if you want my company. Because no matter what happens, he'll, you know he'll always love you. So, Nagamori, even if you're feeling down in the dumps, you gotta try your best to muster up a smile. That's all it takes to make him happy, because he's a freaking idiot. Come on, do it for him. Also, the stuffed animal continues. Also, you gotta keep smiling even when that dumb idiot isn't around, Nagamori. Keep smiling, even when you're on the verge of cramping from forcing it. Because if you let it slip for even a moment, then he'll end up feeling real lonely. These inspiring words were brought to you by, by the kind sponsorship of Attila the Bun. Hair well. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Damn, dude, this is sad. Is there a true route to this game? I don't think there's a true route. 
Fuck. Damn. You know, the other heroes didn't have a happy ending, too. The one I'm thinking about that. But they weren't written by Jun Maide. But they were still a key studio. And they did not have a happy ending. And even in a true route, they didn't have a happy ending. It was just tragic heroines. It's summer. It's sweltering. I may not have a lot of friends, but each one is special to me. I'm the only one looking in the direction of the bu buoys, floating off in a distance at the South Sea. But my friends are with me, and I'm grateful for that. It's fall. Damn! It was January when he disappeared, right? Almost a year. If everything related to my normal life is gone, then what kind of life am I living exactly? When I think about it, my skin breaks out into goosebumps like I'm sick. I'll have to try and be positive again. I ready myself for what lies ahead. It's winter. Not only is the sun frozen, but so is my heart. I wish spring would come so bright sunshine could melt away the ice. You know what this reminds me of? The way it's passing by without the the main character. I know I've been spoiling a lot on the other key studio visual novels. But that's to be expected. Cause you know, you should have read them by now, at least. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. It reminds me of a rewrite. Even though it's not written by Jun Mai Day, this ending reminds me of rewrite. One the saddest route. And all the key studio. The way times continue. And the main character told her to be happy. And he has to go away. So he went away. So now the heroine must live out her life. Remembering the main character. And trying to be happy for his sake. That's what it reminds me of. He did that on two routes actually. He did this on the old girl from Kalana too. But that one's like. It's a vague ending. We don't know what actually happened to him. I guess we kind of know what happened to him, but still. I wish spring would come so the bright sunshine could melt away the ice. And my emotions can run down the gutters of my heart like morning dew. It will slide down smoothly, resonating within me, tugging at my heartstrings. Spring. Spring is the season of goodbyes. I said goodbye to so many people, and now I'm just waiting, waiting for him. The season continues to change in an endless cycle. Or at least that's what I thought. I bumped into several classmates who seemed surprised to see me. It's weird, bud. I'm kind of busy at the moment. I have to keep the class journal up to date. I need to this printout in order to study. Hey! <coughs> it's an obvious fake cough. But it sounds familiar. Um, Nagamori. Huh? Me? Oh, what the fuck? He came back! I look up. And there he is. Looking slightly embarrassed and somewhat shy. But why did he come back? Um, I don't know how to put this. But I like you since far back as I can remember. Will you give me another chance? <gasps> what? That's what he said. The guy who can say such incredibly embarrassing things while looking me straight in the eye. No matter who might be watching. But I'm a straightforward person too, so I answer. Because I love him so much. Because he's the one I've been waiting for all my life. It's only been one year. Because he's the person I want to spend eternity with. Kaidi, Kohei. Iyo. Iyo. That's it? Iyo. She just said yes? Who the fuck is she talking to? Say his name. I love this song. Hey. It was Tsunahara, that asshole. He came in and stole the main character. That doesn't... Do we clap? Is there a stinger? I don't know if I want to clap or not. 
All right, I guess. Okay. What? How did he come back? Why did he go away? So many questions. So many questions. What the hell? Who the hell was that uh, brunette girl that looked like Mizusa? That said, you know, they made a pact. I don't understand the pact of forever. There's so much shit I don't understand. You think we're gonna learn more? There's no true route to this game, right? What the hell? One, two, three, four, five. They don't have a true route. There's, is this the key magic? They don't explain. They don't gotta explain. Did you understand any of that? The promise kiss. When they were kids? Wait, that doesn't make sense though. How did it make the world? Why did it make him? Was he dead already? Oh my god, there's so much. Oh, like, what the fuck? You have no clue. What the hell just happened? It was pretty sad, but. I was more confused than sad, to be honest. I know we took a three month break not playing this game, but. Oh, damn, Honey worked to the instrumental. That's cool. What was I saying? I know we took a three month break, but. I didn't forget that much. Like, here's the story. Um. Do I mute it? I kinda wanna mute it so I can have a thought bubble. I'll wait till after that thingy. No, no, fuck it. I'll explain it right now. Then we got Fiona to do opening and ending. I like that. So the story starts with, you know, her waking him up every morning, right? And then fast forward, they go out with each other. All right? That's when things started going downhill. And then, uh, well, before they started going out with each other, they they told us a background on how they first met. She threw, like, rocks or candy at his window, right? He, he just moved in with his aunt. And she's like, hey, you want to play? He's like, no. And then she threw something, hit his head. And then that's when he first teased her. And then that's when they became friends. And then fast forward, they go out with each other. And then he didn't like that because he didn't like change. We saw with his little sister pass. He got PTSD about changes. So one thing led to another. After New Year's, he did something unforgivable. But then he took it all back and said that he wanted to be a proper boyfriend to her now. So two weeks of being a proper boyfriend, he's starting to disappear. And then that's when he had a flashback about his entire backstory about his little sister dying. Probably having cancer, stomach cancer or something. And then she died. And then he had to move to his aunt. And then he made a promise to... It looked like little Musica. About being together forever. And then, for some reason, he's fading away. We don't know why he's fading away. And then now he told uh, Musica about the, the, the candy story. About the princess and the prince. Apparently, Mizuka's the prince and he's the princess. So, if the promise no longer is needed, the princess would disappear. That doesn't make fucking sense. What? What? Maybe he's already dead. He's a ghost. But then he comes back at the epilogue. And then they explain why she just went through one year trying to be normal, but it didn't work out. She's still feeling sad. And then he comes back next year and asks her out. What the fuck? I'm so confused. And there's no true route to explain it. This is the route. Dude. During my day, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what was that? What the hell was that? What? It was kind of good, I guess. I, I'm gonna be honest, I think the backstory was more interesting than the entire route. Right? Wasn't the little sister backstory way more interesting than Mises' route? 
Like, Mrs. Rod didn't make sense to me. i am be honest. I think that... I think Mrs. Rod was kind of... Eh, it was... It's... I don't know, man. It's, uh... I don't know. Because <laughs> I didn't understand it. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Drew mind it was high. It was the 90s. I don't know what kind of drugs they had back then. Even in Japan. Dude. You know that, uh, Nasu. Nasu, when he did Tsukihime. When he did the... At least Nasu had an ex explanation. For the... What's her name? Koharu. Ko I forgot the girl name. The the maid that started with a K. He's away Kohaku. There you go. Ha Kohaku. And the Kohaku route... Nasu wrote that route in a fever dream. He had a fever for, and he wrote it in two weeks. That was the explanation for that route. This one, what happened during my day? What, did you had a fever dream? And did you have to write this in two weeks? Dude, this route was not, the thing is it wasn't even short, right? This is a normal route. It's like 10 hours, pretty much. Oh, kind of like that. It's a normal size length route, but it's still so many questions that happen. There has to be a true route. Let me see extras. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's confusing. You think there's a secret one right here, right? It's probably true route. I think there's a true route. They're probably not telling us. Dude, I got all the CGs. They're going to tell us in the other route. Right? And one of these routes, they're going to tell us that why he died or something like that you think Mizuka is his little sister I don't know man yo you think Mizuka is his little sister oh my god hold on maybe we could put on the spoilers let's see what happened spoil me disappearance Graduations. Oh, damn. Spoiler. He lives. Mizuka. Mizuka got no spoiler tag. What the fuck? Classmate and childhood friend? Constant sighing? Going along with his jokes? What did he mean she's never going to grow up? Maybe that's a different Mizuka. She takes unusually good care of him. She plays the cello. She likes milk and eating rice. She loves cats. She tends to add Dayo. Oh, she does do that. Oh my god, Jen Mighty does this to everyone, right? Uh, who, who's the girl in Canon? What did she say? Aru. Agu. There you go, I remember. Agu. Does Kalan have a character like that? Oh, what's that starfish girl? Does she say anything cute? I feel like she does something cute. I know little busters. Wafu, right? Could. Let's see, Clannad. I don't think the starfish girl does anything cute. I don't know if Clannad had a catchphrase. I don't remember. I'm trying to go through the characters in my head. Nope, I can't remember. I can only remember Agu and Wafu. I don't think Air has one either. Right? Do Air have one? Oh no, what's that girl name? The main girl. Isn't her name Mizusa? What does she say? Gow! She says Gow! Like a dinosaur. Damn, there she is the main girl. No fucking way. To, that can't be her route. That's bullshit. Now I gotta see the entire character. Did I take off spoilers? Take off spoilers. Let me see. Is there another girl named Mizusa? I mean, Mizuka. Mizuka, Mizuka. Mizuka. Who the fuck's Natsuki? Mizuka. That's my girl. Yukimi. That's my girl. Mizusa. Mizusa. What the hell? 
damn, dude, I want to I wanna read this, but we didn't finish. Who was the other Mizusa? And why did it imply it like that's his little sister? Let's see. I have to, right? Wait, did it have an anime of this? That'd be cool. Oh, they have an anime? What's this? Oh, wow, I like this drawing, actually. I like the art. I got 6.2. How many? Is it over? Three episodes. What this? Damn, dude, they didn't like it. This isn't over again? Oh, God. What was it over about? How can you tell the story in four episodes? Hmm. I like the drawing a lot, though. 90s animes are different. I guess it's early 2000s. Not by, um... Oh, it's Studio Arms. Well, it's a hentai. Wait a minute, what the fuck? This is a hentai! <laughs> what? Damn, no wonder the art is pretty good. <laughs> Wait a minute. The art is good because it's a hentai. What's this one? Is this a hentai too? This is not a hentai. So they made it uh, an over and a hentai. <laughs> Which was better? The hentai or the over? What's the hentai about? Let's see. I like the chibi one. Oh my god, she's in Eternal Fighter Zero. That's cool. Mizuka. All right, somebody gotta explain this, dude. Can we discuss this? They have a a forum. Uh. Who's Akane? It's, it's true that Musica is the poster girl of the game. That doesn't mean much. So is Musica and Kohei making the promise originally start of all this? So this could be that Musica route is natural. It's the natural conclusion. Is that so? Anyway, the internal world was born from a promise between the two of them. Okay. That's what it seems like when that happened, okay? It, it somewhat makes sense for it, the game or the promise, to end with the two of them. This is made very poignant since the girl Kohei always talking to in the internal world. Wait, the girl that he's talking to in the internal world is Mizuka, not his little sister? The one in the anime is voiced by Saber. Musica Saber. I would like to watch that. Saber also voiced another key studio character. And uh, I think it's Kanan, right? Of course, when the characters begin forgetting Kohei, Musica is other than the route heroines. It's the last to forget about him. Making it very obvious that the two are the closest. I think that does make sense that it does show how close Musica and Kohei since it's, 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 she's the one last people to forget about him wait a minute is Musica one the last to forget about Kohei of course on the other side of the argument this route uh, lacks a lot of defining characteristics that are usually found in true routes as she said it can be assessed immediately from the start it's roughly the same length as the others and nothing overly dramatic and out of place happened which is unmistakably similar to IU route and Canyon yeah, there are a lot of evidence that argue that musical route isn't a true route. Considering it lacks a lot of defining characteristics of true route, I mean, sure, Musica is the last um, to forget about Kohei. Showing that they're the closest. They, he repeat himself with this shit. But that's not saying much, sadly, due to evidence against it. It is fucking confusing. So, okay, we knew, okay, that is Little Musica. That's the same person. Little Musica is the same person as the current Musica he's with that is in a the game. They made a promise. It creates the the world. I don't know why. Okay. 
Now we need to know what the fuck they. Let's see. I don't want to read spoilers. That's true. There really doesn't need to be a true route in the visual novel, but it's nice to have one since we can tell if it's canon or not. Well, the other issue about not having a true route is usually true route patches the the questions that everyone has, right? Because it's the route where they don't have to focus on a heroic background. They can focus more on patching holes and questions that the viewers may have with the main character and the story itself. That's what True Rock could do. And obviously, yes, it's also the canon ending that everyone likes. Musica Route is basically a placeholder of True Route for the lack of an actual one. But even then, her route isn't a real True Route. So one started chronological with exchange between Kohei and Mizuka when they met as kids after his sister's death was basically limiting that there's no such thing as eternity. What? No way. Uh, what the fuck? They likely don't know the concrete details. We likely don't know. So the more we play this game, we're not going to know, right? That's it. Because there's no true route. Everything we saw in the route is what we get. No, wait, they have to explain. Let's see. It was good. You watch the anime adaptation. Favorite key. Uh, I, I try not to read that spoiler. Musica. Okay, so this is a better explanation. Let's see. Everything started with the death of his little sister Misao. Yeah, he's just, he's despaired. And then the major events happened in his life. He met Musica, and they made a promise with each other. The eternal world comes for those who don't want to live in this world anymore. What? You think they create their own world? What the fuck? Like some little buster shit, right? Probably. When you accepted the Pledge of Eternity, the only thing you can't that, that can stop the process is something strong that ties you with the real world. You don't enter the eternal world instantly, but the process is still pretty fast. Oh, no, no. This, this going too much, uh... This is going too much uh spoilers. Too much spoilers. They're talking about other people around. Too much spoilers. Do I have a visual novel guide? I guess not. Alright, alright. We read that later then. Uh, I'll make sure to read it after we're done. I guess they go they go into it more. Hey, I'm curious. What do people like? Oh, he deleted it. Pussy. Tiger. Talking about for everyone. Talking about everyone, huh? Damn, I don't know what to think. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what to think about this. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I guess I'm confused. That's what. That's why I don't know what to think. I don't know if this is good or not. <laughs> well, because there's a lot of factors going in. 
we took a three month break. We took a lot of breaks from this. And uh, I'm just confused. <laughs> I'm just very confused on what happened. Can we look at my favorite girl before we go? It used to be the blind girl, but I'm going to be honest. I like her best friend more. Damn, dude. She's so hot. Fuck. Why couldn't she have a route? The plot holes make you overthink. Yeah, like they explain why he almost NTR'd himself. They say he's a fucking idiot. And we're like, oh, he can't be that stupid. Then we read the story, we continue it. And then we realized, okay, he is that stupid. <laughs> yeah, he is that stupid. And then we really, later, later realized he might be unconsciously doing it. Because he know he can't be with her forever. Because he know that he has to go. But then now we got to answer the question, why does he have to go? I guess we got to read the other girls route, maybe. You think they're going to say it? Man, she's so cute. She's the only one that's cute right here. I like her a lot. Then they did a great job with her character design. Good shit. Not making her a heroine. Damn, all the other girls are heroines. Nothing against the other girls. I'm sure they have great personalities. But, I mean, dude, she looks so different from everyone else, too. <laughs> she looked like a main character. She does not look like a background character. That's the thing. She stands out so much. What do I want to look at? Man, there's so much questions. They made a second one. Forever. The promise of forever. What? They made a second one? <laughs> Get it? Second one? <laughs> uh, who's the writer? Oh, they don't even have Jun Mai Day. They made a second one about Jun Mai Day. So who wrote this? Let's see. It's Shinji, Jun, and Naoki. They don't have any of the same people. This is like a completely different one. Base Sun, Omega Lel. Uh oh. Is that a bad sign? I don't think I want to read this one. No Jun Mai Day. Whoa, you get a teacher though. Hmm. Maybe I'll read this one. Who's the heroines? Oh, you get a lot of heroines. It's everyone. <laughs> That's the entire cast. The fuck? Full brother? What the fuck that mean? What is that? Both parents with the other sibling with no shit. What the fuck? Oh my god. Let's see. Variety tactics? What's this one? Variety tactics. Okay. No fan disc? This is this is the only fan disc. And this, this had a hentai and an ova. Hmm. Interesting. All right. All right. I guess that was Mises around. I guess we got to clap it up, right? Clap it up for the poster girl. Good poster girl. I guess. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Maybe when we learn more about the story, maybe I'll appreciate it more for now. Um, This is Jun Mighty's first work, so. Eh. This, you could still tell it's a Jun Mighty work. All right, we're doing Best Girls in Saki next. Sweet. I'm going in order. Mizuka, Misaki, Rumi, Miyu, Mayu, Akane. Me? Eh, whatever. We'll do Misaki next. I like Misaki anyway. Alright, she's blind. 
And she got a hot best friend. So we're in there. Dude, I like her curly hair. She has wavy hair. Damn, dude, why did it make the best friend way hotter? This is fucked up. Right? This is so fucked up. You can't make the best friend hot. It's like you're testing my loyalty. I mean, Misaki's hot. Don't get me wrong. I don't like that she's blind. But, bro, have you seen her best friend? They should make the hair a little bit more wavy. It is a little bit wavy. I, I like that. Damn, bruh. So fucked up. Best friend's too hot. Anyway, yeah, that's good shit. Oh, that's the game. I'm like, what the hell is this? I guess usually this is the part where I talk about my favorite scenes. My favorite scenes when they told him this backstory. About his little sister being dead. He has one version. What? Ah, oh, dude, I already exited. What are you talking about? This is the PS1 version? One. PS1 version of Voice by Saber. What? That's such a stupid tag. Only versions? Heroines. That's a stupid tag, dude. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Let's see. Her? That's Saber. My Yuki. Yuka. What? No, the girl I like. Wait. Oh, what? Only in PS1? PS1. VA. Her. This saber. What else she was in? Well, she's in a lot. Oh, gee. Who's this character? Her? <laughs> what? I did not know that. I don't even know who that is. Let's see. Wait a minute. They got a different girl. What a remake. I guess it makes sense. You think they're going to make another anime? They do remake anime nowadays. We had Yu Yu Hakusho. No, not Yu Hakusho. We had Shaman King remake. And uh, now we're getting Spice and Wolf remake. There's another girl. Sakurai Harumi. No longer a saver. She had a lot of different names. She seems OG too. Yeah, dude. She's from the 90s. Excuse me, Ayakashi Triangle. What? It's just Saya? Holy shit! They meet the pink hair girl Saya. That's kind of cool. Oh, Saber's probably too expensive. That probably makes sense. They couldn't afford Saber anymore. Because she's popular. They spent all the money on Fiona. Hmm. What well, was looking at? 
I don't know, you guys. I don't know why you made me look at Saber again. I mean, <laughs> pink hair girl. <laughs> oh, I don't remember one thing. Oh, my favorite scenes. Yeah, I like the backstory the best. That's my favorite part. But if I had to pick a scene with her. Hmm. Did you guys like any of the scenes? I think the scenes was okay. I think it was a lot painful to watch most of the time. Because it was either generic, like slice of life. And then it went to him ignoring her. And her trying to make make it work. And then they couldn't go on a date because he passed out. Damn, dude. Hey. What was this one? This one's closest to it, right? I like this one a lot. Where he, like, make her major look and ate her crepes. That was cute. She talk about the cat. Then he got her a bunny. Oh, that's cute. Hey, that was cute. I like that. Damn, dude. I didn't like that. Dang. Whoa, what's my favorite song? Oh, this one's pretty good. You know, I like the upbeat. The upbeat music. Do, do, do. Who's whose theme song is this? You think that's just a generic music? I know it's generic. Damn, nice. What's a cast? That's probably that's the whatever I guess. Smile innocent. That's probably Saki. I like this one too. Oh, that's that thing. Oh, that one's good as fuck. I like this one. See, sounds in the afternoon. A sad one. I think OSC is pretty good. Hmm. Radiant season. Yeah, this one's my favorite one, easy. We gotta wait for the beat drop. I like that. I guess my favorite scene with Nagamori is her waking him up. I think those are always funny. I like their dynamic duo. That's the thing. I like the slice of life. I think when it was slice of life dynamic duo comedy, Nagamori and Kohei was really good. I think those are really good chemistry together. Let's see how the other girls are. I'm just sad that it turned out like that. It could have been better in my opinion, but let's see. Next girl. Oh, should we go in order like this? Should we do Rumi next? I don't know. Misaki and Rumi. I guess this is go in order. Let's do Rumi next. Screw it. Let's do Rumi next. I guess that makes sense. Anyway. Dang, dude. One. There exists another world. A world without destination to go to. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is one with hope. An eternal world. Now we know... A world where time remains still. Now we know what that means. This is not the real world, I guess. Is it? No? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know more with the other routes. Damn. They're going to make me look at her. <laughs> Yo. Should we do Miyu? Dang, I kind of want to do... uh, Not Miyu. I call her Miyu because she has long black hair. And when I think of the name Miyu, I think of Kayon. The girl is Misaki. I wonder if I want to do Misaki next. I'll think about it. Misaki or Twin Tails? 
kind of want to do. Uh, I might do Misaki. Let's do it. Just because that's a different author too, right? Oh, they don't tell you right here. You do Misaki next. What's the other girl name? Rumi, right? Yeah, we do Misaki next. Oh, they have a Miyu in this game. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Anyway, with that, I appreciate when I stopped by. It's been cool. That was something. I'm sure we'll understand more and appreciate the game more the more routes we play. And that's what we're going to do. So, appreciate when I stopped by. It's been cool. We'll play more one. Whoever route will start next. Later. Bye.